Lesson 12.9 relates shapes, fractions, and area. We can divide shapes into equal areas, that's equal parts, and write the area as a unit fraction of the whole shape. We learned about unit fractions back in Lesson 8.3, and that's linked in the description. We can draw lines that will divide the shape into parts with equal areas. Then we can write the area of each part as a fraction by using 1 as a numerator and the number of equal parts as the denominator. We can divide a square into two equal parts to make two halves, a half and a half, that's two halves. We can also divide it into more equal parts. We can divide it into four equal parts and make a fourth, a fourth, a fourth, and a fourth. We can trace a hexagon pattern block, like this one, then divide our drawing into two equal parts with equal area. And depending on where we draw our line, we will either make two trapezoids, we have a trapezoid up here and a trapezoid down here, or we can make two pentagons. Look, this has got one, two, three, four, five sides. They're sharing this side, see that? So we have a pentagon here and a pentagon there. So depending on where we draw the line, we'll make two trapezoids or two pentagons out of that hexagon. We divided the hexagon into two equal parts and each part is half of the whole hexagon. And the fraction that names the whole area is two halves. We can write it as a two numerator and a two denominator. And remember, when the numerator and denominator are the same number, it's equal to one whole. We can cut out a shape and fold it to see if the sides match and are the same size. Here we have a hexagon, and I just folded it like this, and look, I made a trapezoid here, and there's a trapezoid here. See, there's two trapezoids? We make two trapezoids that are each half of the whole area. If we fold the hexagon into fourths, we fold it in half, and then we fold it in half again, look, we make four trapezoids that are each one-fourth of the whole area. And six triangles are in one hexagon. Each triangle is one-sixth of the whole area. Each triangle is one of six equal parts. To divide a regular polygon into equal areas, we can go across to opposite vertices. So remember, vertices means more than one vertex, and the vertex is a corner. So for this triangle, we started at a vertex, but we went to an opposite side, and we made two triangles that have equal area. For this square, we went from this vertex to the opposite side, and then we went from this vertex to the opposite side and made four equal areas. We could also use cut the square by going from this side down to that side, and from the left side to the right side and making four equal areas. For a rectangle, we can cut it into equal areas in many different ways. We can make two equal triangles by cutting it on a diagonal like this, opposite vertices, see? We can make four equal areas, six equal areas, eight equal areas. And look at this hexagon. By going from this vertex to the opposite vertex across from it, and doing it again and doing it again, we can make six triangles, see? Or we could go from the opposite sides and to that opposite side, see? And these opposite sides and these opposite sides and make six equal areas. So be careful when you're cutting these into equal areas. You want to make sure that both sides are equal to each other. You wouldn't want to do it like this. This side is not equal to that side, okay? Take a look at this drawing. We have a rectangle. And this rectangle is divided into three parts with equal areas. The unit fraction that names each part of the divided whole is one third. See, we have yellow, green, and red. So, and it kind of looks like a dark pink, but we have three different colors that are three equal areas. The area of each part is four square units. We have four yellow ones, four green ones, four red ones, 
it takes three of these parts to make one whole, so the unit fraction that names each part of the divided whole is one-third. The yellow is one-third of the rectangle, the green is one-third of the rectangle, and the red is one-third of the rectangle. We can divide a trapezoid into three equal parts as three triangles. See, if I squeeze these together, these three triangles, it's the same as this trapezoid, see? Same area. Each triangle is one-third of the whole area. Each triangle is one of three equal parts. It's telling us to divide this shape into four equal parts. And we can draw lines to divide a shape into parts with equal area. We count the unit squares. So I counted them starting up here at one, and I went all the way down and I counted 24 unit squares. Then we divide the total unit squares by the number of equal parts. We do 24 divided by four equal parts. 24 divided by four is equal to six. We know that each of our parts has to have six unit squares. And the parts can be any connected units. So the blue has six units, the yellow has six units, the red has six units, and the green has six units. That's four equal parts. All right, let's try some higher level reasoning. So if three triangles equals one trapezoid and two trapezoids equal one hexagon, how many triangles will equal two hexagons? So we think we can multiply these three triangles by four trapezoids because we need two hexagons. So that would be four trapezoids, wouldn't it? And if each of these trapezoids has three triangles in it, see, we can do three times four, which is equal to 12 triangles and two hexagons. Or we can think there's three triangles equals half of a hexagon, right? Because one trapezoid is half of a hexagon. That means six triangles equals a whole hexagon. If three equals half, then six is equal to one whole. And to get two hexagons, we just multiply the six triangles times two, and we get 12 triangles and two hexagons. Same answer, 12 triangles, 12 triangles. There's usually different ways to solve one problem. Okay, so if three triangles is equal to one trapezoid, and two trapezoids are equal to one hexagon, well, then we have three and three. That means we have six triangles equal to a hexagon, right? This means that one third of this trapezoid is equal to one sixth of the hexagon. Now, because we're comparing the equal parts of the trapezoid to the equal parts of the hexagon, which are two different size holes, this trapezoid is a different size than that hexagon, these fractions are equal to the same area. One third is equal to one six. So here we have one whole hexagon, but look, that would be one whole trapezoid. See how they're different size holes? This is a smaller hole than that, right? So one six of this one would be equal to one third of this one, see? We can take this one six piece and it's same as the one-third piece here because this hole is smaller. See? We're not comparing the same size whole amount. So in this case, one-third ends up being equal to one-six. In order for one-third to be equal to one-third, we would have to start with the same size whole. Or for one-six to be equal to one-six, they would both have to have the same size whole. If the area of three of these blue rhombuses is equal to the area of one hexagon, how many blue rhombuses are in this shape below? We can take three of these blue rhombuses and put them together to equal one hexagon. We need to find how many blue rhombuses would be in this entire shape. So 
If three of the rhombuses equal to one hexagon, we can count the hexagons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven hexagons. And if there's three of the rhombuses in each one, we can do seven hexagons times the three rhombuses in each. That's 21 rhombuses. And look, we have one, two, three, four, five, six blue rhombuses going around the side. We do 21 plus six, that's equal to 27 rhombuses in all. We did multiplication seven times three for the yellow hexagons. And then we added the six blue rhombuses that were going around the edge. And 21 plus six is equal to 27 rhombuses. And each blue rhombus is one of 27 equal parts or 1 27th of the whole shape. So we can split shapes, divide shapes into equal parts, equal areas, and write a unit fraction for each of the equal parts. I'm going to have one more last video for this playlist, and it's going to be about 3D shapes, three-dimensional shapes, shapes that have length, width, and height. I hope I'll see you there. Have a great day. Bye.